The economist Emmanuel Saez is out with a new data analysis about income gains during the economic recovery, and it doesn't look good. So first, we learn this, quote, Last year, real average incomes for each family in the bottom 99% of earners grew by 3.3%, the best rate since 1999, and amounting to the first year of an actual income recovery from the losses they suffered during the recession. By 2014, these families recovered just under 40% of what they lost. Okay, so, understand that. What they're saying is, the 99% isn't even back to pre-recession levels. We earned back less than half of what we lost in the Great Recession and the subprime mortgage crisis. That's very important because... You know, the media will talk about, oh, great economic recovery. And understand, in some ways, it has been decent. It's been decent stock market-wise. It's been decent in terms of we have cut back on unemployment and things like that. But the devil's in the details. And if you go into the details, you find out, like, a lot of the job creation has been low-wage job creation. And you find out that the growth in the stock market, while it's not necessarily a bad thing, what that does reflect is that most of the gains in this recovery have been going to the rich above other people. So look, it's not to say that what's happening now is, it, with the recovery, is worse than the original crash and what happened with George W. Bush. It's not. It's still better. But keep things in perspective and understand the recovery could be a hell of a lot better, specifically for middle class people and poor people. While we are moving in the right direction, in some ways, we're really not moving in the right direction by the most important measure. So, with that being said, let's listen to the next passage here. They say, The rich did far better, however. The top 10% of American earners captured 49.9% of total income. That represents the highest share they've ever gained except for 2012. Okay, so now let me show everybody the chart here because this should concern you. Alright, so what you're looking at here is uh, the where the income in America is going. And you can see the dates at the bottom. It shows from 1917 all the way up until uh, 2012, or a little bit after 2012. It's, it actually goes to 2014. And what you see is, during the so-called Roaring Twenties, even though it was fake growth, and then you had the fucking bubble burst, and... The jig was up, and there was a Great Depression in 1929, and then the stock market crash. During the Roaring Twenties, what do you see happening there? Well, you see that the top 10% of uh, income earners, they took a gigantic share of the income. So, it was around 40% in 1917. It shot all the way up in about 1928. It shot all the way up to 49% or so. Now, there's a problem with that. When you have the top 10% earning such a gigantic chunk of the income in an economy, you know what happens? The middle class and the poor no longer have what's called purchasing power. So they can't really go out to the store anymore and buy the goods that keep the economy go going. And, by the way, continue to make it so that the so-called captains of industry can make those products. If the middle class and the poor don't have money to make the products that are built by the so-called captains of industry, well, then everybody's fucked. Because nobody's going to buy the captain of industry shit anymore, so he's going to get fucked in the long run, too. So when you have such a gigantic uh, gap between the rich and the poor in a society, it ends up screwing over everybody. Now, if you continue on that line there, what you find is the gigantic drop-off uh, with the stock market crash and then the Great Depression. And then around 1942, what you see is the top 10%, they kind of leveled off in terms of what percentage of the income they end up uh, taking home. So it's between 30 and 35% or thereabouts. That's the percentage of income that the top 10% were taking home during what was called the golden age of economic expansion in America. So think about what that means. What's the flip side of that coin? The flip side of that is, if the top 10% are only taking home, say, 32% of the total amount of income in, in an economy, where's the rest of the income going? To the bottom 90%. That would be healthy for an economy, because then the middle class and the poor can actually buy shit, and we all get a shot at equal opportunity and success. 
Well, fast forward there until the early 1980s, and what happens? We start moving in the opposite direction. We start moving in the exact same direction that led to uh, the Great Depression. And why is that? I mean, this is another interesting point to bring up here. Why is it that in around 1980, you had this diversion where, again, all of the money basically started going to the top 10% again? What happened? Very simply, that's when the Supreme Court ruled that money equals free speech. And that's when we basically legalize corruption and legalize bribery in our political system. So the politicians are only listening to the billionaires, only listening to the rich, only listening to Wall Street, only listening to corporations. So they only do what those groups want. And then lo and behold, all the policies are set in favor of the rich, and they're set against your average American. And look at how it manifests. You have the top 10%, as of uh, you know 2010 and onward there, you have the top... 10% uh, taking in about 50% of the income in, in the country. The top 10% are making 50% of the nation's income. That is incredibly lopsided, incredibly lopsided. So we're right back to the distribution of wealth that existed right before the fucking Great Depression. You know what's going to happen eventually, son? The jig is up. That's what's going to happen. An economy, we're out of tricks, man. I mean, what, are, what are we supposed to do from here? When the middle class and the poor are totally squeezed and they're all tapped out on their credit and they have fucking student loans out the wazoo and they got all these problems, they're all in debt, what happens? Eventually, people can't buy the material goods anymore. When they can't buy material goods, the jig is up because then the companies go out of business, the captains of industry are affected, and the entire economy tanks. And this, I, this doesn't even take into account other problems, gigantic problems like derivatives, which are totally unregulated, and it's casino capitalist gambling, which always blows up in the first place. So think about, look at this, man. Look at what's happened. We totally have forgotten the lessons of history. We totally have forgotten that a, a more equitable distribution of wealth is necessary for a capitalist economy or a mixed market economy to survive. You can't have massive income inequality like this because it's going to blow up in everybody's faces given enough time. But of course it's the, the unfettered greed of the idiots in the top 1% that have led us to this point. And then what happens when it blows up? What are they going to do? They'll blame Obama and they'll turn around and blame democratic policies. Even though the solution to this problem is what? True democratic policies, true progressive policies, efficiently regulating Wall Street in the marketplace, saying that money does not equal free speech anymore, having a New Deal program again, having strong unions, doing a new New Deal, infrastructure spending, shovel-ready jobs, all that stuff, that's the answer. But I fear that when the next crash happens, it'll be all too easy for pundits on the right and your average idiot to say, well, we had Obama in office and this crash done happened. So I guess you're going to blame the liberals and we should elect Republicans and have them do their policies. But no, you idiots, the problem is that the Democrats and the Republicans did too far right-wing economic policies. The answer is and always will be left-wing economic policies so we have a better distribution of wealth and the entire society is better off.